All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Quick video. Uh, next up is going to be the expected claims method for reserving. So if you want, pause the video real quick and open up your Excel and just copy down this array here. I have some reported claims by accident year, by age. I have some calendar year on leveled earned premium. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And I have some age to age factors, which I computed in the prior video. Go ahead and watch that. If you have not seen it yet, I will link it up top. Okay, so now that you paused it and copied that down, if you want to follow along, <clears throat> we will continue. Uh, I did change these values from the last video to make it a little more interesting. So go ahead and make that update. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center this. <clears throat> And you might be thinking, oh, you just merge cells. Never merge cells. It is really annoying to merge cells when you're trying to copy stuff and paste it elsewhere. It's just a good habit to instead go to the alignment, go to format cells, go to alignment, go to horizontal, go to center across selection. It has effectively the same thing, except for if you want to reference the cell, I would now only go to C12. So C12 represents this entire piece. All right, so as I mentioned in the prior video, I did go through the reported claim development technique or the reported development technique, and that's what I've sort of outlined here uh, as before. So the same procedure as in the prior video, just a few updated values here. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of that again. Uh, if you recall, what we're doing here is I'm just looking at the age to age factors. I'm looking at the percent increase. And then I have some averages here. Usually we have a lot of different averages and we want to decide which one to use. I've selected the three year simple average. And from that, that will give me a cumulative development factor. The cumulative development factor is the factor that needs to be applied to the most recent diagonal in order to obtain your ultimate claims. So I've I've now uh, just reproduced here for ease <clears throat> the reported claims in the most recent calendar year. In this case, it's as of 12-31-2020. So I have all of the recent diagonal right here. Nothing fancy going on. I have the CDF, the cumulative development factor. Um, 2014 is already fully developed, so CDF of one. And then I just bring in these other CDFs here as you can see. So what is the ultimate claim value based off the reported development technique? I'm just going to product these two columns. So nothing fancy going on. I'm just going to multiply those two together. Now I want to look at an alternate method and um, it's called the expected claims method. So what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, an ultimate loss ratio and we're going to make a selection um as to what we think that ultimate loss ratio will be we'll apply the ultimate loss ratio to premium to get expected ultimate claims so i'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a moment but <clears throat> let's first just think about why we might want to do this the reason you may want to do might want to do this is because notice that these two these two uh, most recent accident years are highly under underdeveloped undeveloped in fact, most of the ultimate claim estimate here of 1024 is IBNR. Remember, that's incurred but not reported. So there's a lot of uncertainty about what this, these specifically these last, these most recent accident years, uh, what these ultimate claim values should be, which means we may want to resort to uh, other techniques. In this case here, we've seen a large increase in premium. In fact, we can just compute the year-over-year -year increase in premium very easily by taking the quotient and subtracting one. So it increased quite a bit. In year 2018 to 2019, it jumped by 25%. So this would cause potentially further distortion in the reported, uh, in the uh, development technique. So we're going to try this other technique called the... Um, expected claim technique or the expected uh, technique just in general 
And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get trended ultimate loss ratios. Now, in this column here, I have calendar year on level earned premium. So usually in this technique, we'd have to also use uh, on level factors, which I've talked about in another video. I'll do another one, but uh, my computer's freaking out. And we're going to assume, though, for now that there are no historical uh, rate changes. For uh, ease of the example, we're just going to assume there are no historical rate changes, which means earned premium is the same as on-level earned premium. I'm not going to get into the details of that. I'll get to, get to it in another video, but it makes the calculation in this example easier. And these fictitious numbers that I've come up with to be easier to determine as well. So I'm going to get some loss ratios. How do I get loss ratios? Loss ratios are just losses divided by uh, premium. Now I want the ultimate loss ratios. Okay, I'm going to get the ultimate loss, the ultimate losses from the reported development technique divided by premium. But now I want to um, bring all of the loss ratios to a specific level. In this case, I'm going to bring them to the 2020 level. I want to restate all of my losses and premium at the level of 2020. The way I do that, in this case, I need to use what was given, which was a uh, loss trend. Oh, be quiet. Oh, be quiet. Uh, so I need to bring in the loss trend. I'm going to fix that value. And I need to also bring in the premium trend. And I'm going to fix that value. And I'm fixing these because I'm going to have to drag these. So how far do I want to trend it? I want to trend these to, excuse me, 2020. So I'm going to fix 2020. I'm going to subtract this. So this will take my loss ratio. Remember, it's the ultimate loss ratio, the ultimate trend and loss ratio. I'm going to take the ultimate losses divided by premium, trend losses, trend premium, to how many years? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. I need to bring 2014 to the 2020 level. And I need to do that for each of these. So that's what I'm doing here. So now I have loss ratios for years which I kind of trust the development technique. And I'm going to use these loss ratios to, and again, these are at the 2020 level. I'm going to use these. I'm going to select a loss ratio, usually based on averages. And I'll use that to somehow get the ultimate claim estimate for the expected method. So what is the average here? They're kind of trending upward. The average is 61.3. You can just take an average. I mean, you have to use some actuarial judgment here. Um, it looks like they're trending upward. Uh, I'm gonna maybe pick a 62. Okay, it's at the 2020 level, right? This is the 2020 level because the reason is these are all trended to 2020. So I've restated the loss ratios to be valued at the level of 2020. So I've picked my, my loss ratio, my ELR, my expected loss ratio at the 2020 level. How do I get it to the 2019 level once I've made that selection? I'm going to take this and I need to detrend it one year. So loss ratio is loss over premium. I need to multiply by premium trend because I need to detrend. Uh, divided by loss trend because I'm detrending now. So I'm detrending one year. And this will give me the loss ratio, the expected loss ratio at the 2019 level. How am I going to get the expected claims? Well, since these are loss ratios, they're losses over premium, premiums in the denominator, I know what the premium is for these two years. It's 1820 and 1863. So I can simply multiply by, uh, that's actually 2019. Okay, so 2019 accident year, accident year 2019 uh, expected ultimate claims is going to be the 2019 ELR times the 2019 uh, OLEP, calendar year on level or premium. So that looks good. So there's my estimate for the expected ultimate claims using the ELR method. And now I need to do the same thing, but for 2020. So I take the 2020 ELR times the 2020 OLEP on level and premium, and I get this estimate here. Notice, notice here that the expected ultimate claims method does give you 
a value higher than the reported development technique. This method here recognizes this growth in earned premium that was experienced that we didn't have in the prior years. Now, wouldn't it be nice, you might be thinking, wouldn't it be nice, an old Beatles song. I used to have a teacher that always said that. So every time I think that, that's what I think. I know, hilarious. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a method that gave us an, a sort of a blend between these two methods, between the expected method and the reported development method? Well, there is a there is a method, and it's called the BF method or the Born Queter Ferguson method. I cannot say that name. I think it might be German or something, but that will be the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.